So I've collected all the information we've learned from the labs uh, in this bar right here. Um, there's the two equations we measured directly. This is the distance time equation that we got from the parabolic graphs. This is the linear velocity time equation. Um, there's this mysterious third one, which is a combination of the two of them and another equation. But what's nice about it is time does not appear. I also pointed out that we know the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, we saw that from the data I took off the following stuffed animal video, and that's the widely agreed upon value on planet Earth. We also know that when something's at the top of its flight, its vertical velocity is zero. So those pieces of information can help us solve some problems. So I wanted to give you a couple examples, two video examples, and then several other worked out problems that you can use uh, to help you get started on these. Um, so here's my example. Uh, a lot of people care about how fast their car can go from zero to 60. So according to zero to 60 times.com, that's how fast my 1997 Dodge Caravan can do it. Um, it's actually pretty snappy. Um, and I want to know how far it gets while I'm stepping on the accelerator and having that happen. First thing to notice is that I had to do a unit conversion. I did it already. Uh, unit conversions are not a big deal in this class. That's mostly taught in chemistry. But they're important because if your units don't match throughout your equation, you'll mess stuff up. So we always in physics just put stuff in standard units. Meters for distance, seconds for time. Um, so we have a 26.82 meters per second. The first thing you want to do when you solve a physics problem is you want to figure out all of your data that you know. And you want to put it down in an organized fashion. So let's do that. We know 26.82 meters per second is a velocity. So is it the velocity the car ends up with, or is it the velocity it starts with? I think it's pretty obvious that it's the velocity the car ends up with, so we're going to just call it v. The car's starting at zero, so that means zero is our velocity original. Now, how did I know this was velocity? I mean, it's pretty easy to guess, but you can also use the units as a clue. Meters per second's got to be velocity. Do we know anything else? Well, it tells us nine seconds. So that unit makes us think that must be time. And it also says 11.2 seconds. So that must be time as well. So when do we use the different times? Well, we know that the car is going from 0 to 60 in 11.2 seconds. So this nine seconds must be something else that we're going to deal with later. So we'll just hit pause on this one for a second. So what we really know is that information. So what you do next is you basically, oh, I'm sorry, not this one. We know the 11.2. So what you do next is you basically look for an equation that has the things you have in there plus the th something that you don't know. And that something you don't know we can solve for and then we know more information. So V, V, O, and T. If I look over here, the one equation that helps me with is this one. So let's try solving it. Always just copy down um, the equation first. That way I know which one you're trying to use. We'll just start plugging stuff in. So V apparently is 26.82. VO is zero. We don't know A, so now we're going to know A. And T is 11.2. So what we find out is that 26.82 11.2a. So we'll just divide both sides by 11.2. And we're 
left with 26.82 divided by 11.2, 2.39 meters per second squared is our acceleration. So that wasn't what it was asking for, but it's something. And now we can use that something in any of the other equations that we want. So it's saying how far. That means we want to know a distance. And that must be what this nine seconds is for. It must be for how long it takes to go this distance. So there we can put our last number in. So I'm just going to copy down the equation that has distance and time in it, which is the one that comes from our parabola. So um, just plug the numbers in. So x is our unknown. We'll leave it as such. XO, where you start, is usually zero, unless you've been given that information explicitly. VO, we know, was zero. And we know that acceleration now is 2.39. And I don't know why I'm leaving t's in here, because we actually know the t. The t is 9 seconds. All right, so now we just solve that. So x equals 0. 9 times 0 is 0. Plus, if we square 9, 9 times 9 is 81 times 2.39, and all that divided by 2, 96.8 meters. So x is 96.8 meters, or about a football field. So the end result of this problem looks pretty impressive. But again, it came from the fact that I approached it in an organized fashion. I listed everything I knew. I had two times, so I said, which one's it really talking about at first? I saw for acceleration, which didn't seem to be the answer, but it gave me a hint that maybe that's where um, I could use it farther down the line. Once I had acceleration, I went and asked myself again, is there an equation where there's only one unknown? And that got me my final answer.